Hey, what is up everyone? This is Private Mittens, and today I'm going to be doing my Sultan Sanctuary review for the PS4. This game is also available on PC and Xbox One. I'm not too sure if the Wii U has it, but let us begin. This game is essentially a Souls game 2D. As you can see, the menus are the same. You've got, you know, item slots. You've got magic. You've got weapons. Your weapons, you know, have different animations. You know, you've got... It just it is exactly like a Souls game, except it's 2D. Everything the Souls games has, except for the uh, online. There's no online to this game, but it does have split screen co-op, which I, I suppose is still nice to have. But uh, you also have a B stream, which tells you you know what enemies you've killed and whatnot. But uh, the game is a 2D side scroller, which to make up for not being 3D as a Souls game. It's got platforming sections, which are actually quite, you know, good to say the least. Uh, as you can see, it looks like a Souls game through and through. It's aesthetically pleasing, very nice graphics, and very nice animations. The only thing I can fault the presentation on is the music. The music is a bit generic, to say the least, but the actual sound design is fantastic to this game. Uh, when you level up, you use the salt of your enemies, which is essentially the souls, does exactly the same. But you get a uh, skill tree. Your skill tree lets you, you know, put the points where you want them to go. You know, it's sort of better than the standard souls way, which it's a very nice welcome. Uh, you can see there's like a yellow symbol above the salt. That's gold. That's essentially just to buy items off vendors. But where I am now is a sanctuary. It has four slots to put people in. Now, for example, if I put a traveler, which lets you to fast travel, a blacksmith, and a... Let's say a cleric and a... A merchant, right? I can't put a black... Uh, I can't put a um, mage there. I actually have to go somewhere that has a mage. I actually really like that feature because it makes you think, oh, should I put the person here or wait just a bit longer and put it here? That's something I really did like and I think is very unique to this game. I mean, overall, I think that's great. The platforming is very solid except for the wall climbing. As you can see, I should not have dropped there even though it claims I did. That's the only issue I have with the platforming, which is the wall... Uh, jumping but uh, everything else is top notch because it's in 3d your dodging move to dodge enemies is the roll which you see me doing or it's an air dash which the air dash comes in you know handy later on in the game which you don't get to later anyway the game has two endings which i will not be spoiling so it is pretty you know it's got two endings for an indie game uh I'm going to fight a boss here. It wasn't too hard. You'll see me fight two other bosses. The second one almost beats me. The third one, to me, is the hardest boss in the game. Uh, you can see, like, two arrows pointing at his health bar. He killed me last time I was fighting him. Which, it does exactly the same as what the Souls games do. You know, oh, you don't get it back, you lose it. But there's a twist to that. Whatever enemy killed you gains attack and defense and you have to kill, it makes it harder to kill them to get your salt, uh, salt back. That's a nice feature as well, actually. It makes the game a lot harder. But in difficulty wise, it's not, this game is nowhere near the difficulty as Dark Souls 1 and Demon Souls. But it's still, you know, it's not as easy as, say, Dark Souls 2 and Bloodborne. It's in between, like, a Dark Souls 3 kind of difficulty. But, uh, the weapon you see me using is a soul, uh, a boss weapon. I used the boss soul to get it. Yes, when you beat bosses in this game, they drop salt, gold, and as you can see, he drops something else. I used the boss weapon, as you can see. It's got, you know, a lot of content for a game that only costs $23. And for an indie title that actually is good, is very rare indeed. Um, I'm going down the uh, cavern here. This was the first, like... That bat you saw, if you die by falling, he spawns with your salt. You have to kill him. Now, you see me moving the camera here because I did not make it. 
this far down. So I was actually, you know, taking my time kind of thing. Uh, so I beat these three tossers, this boss, there's three of them, in the first playthrough. But they almost beat me. And to say the least, I was shit myself. But uh, yeah, as I was stating, the music is the probably the... It's very generic. It's the worst thing about this game. But the sound design is great nonetheless. Graphics as I stated, aesthetically fantastic. It looks like a Souls game. Even if it didn't, it's got great graphics, great animation, great design. I mean, they look really intimidating. But when I first went up against them, I was like, what the hell? As you can see, I had no strategy. I was trying to see what they were doing. But I noticed it was the prick with the magic that was dealing the damage. But, uh... Yeah, the only issue with the graphics as well is your character design. You make your own character like you would any Souls game, but they look very like a Flash game on a computer graphically, which I know it's an indie game, but they could have put more uh, emphasis on the characters you design because, I mean, look how good the enemies look in this game. But, uh, yeah, I mean, honestly, this game came out in March of this year, I think. I only recently just got it because I only recently just heard of it. It's fantastic. It's one of the best games of the year, in my opinion, and it's one of the best download games of this generation. It's up there with uh, Rogue Legacy and Shovel Knight and um, Rocket League, even though Shovel Knight and Rocket League are on disc now. But uh, as you can see, he left me with a spick of health. If I hadn't hit him there, he would have got me. I was panicking at this point. Um, little Irish jig there. That's another issue. When you beat certain bosses, it does like a little stutter. It only seems to do it with bosses. When you're actually playing the game, no issue whatsoever. Which is great nonetheless, but still shouldn't be there. Uh, the other feature that's different between this and a 3D Souls game is... This game has no multiplayer, which so it means you can't help people, you can't be invaded, none of that. But it makes up for it by split screen, which, give or take, it's still nice to have. Game took me about 18 hours on my first playthrough, which isn't bad for a download. And it's pretty meaty for a download. But, uh, yeah, I mean, overall, it's a fantastic game. This is the boss I believe is the hardest in the game. Killed me like five times before I actually beat him. I had to go and grind out to come back and beat the shit. People say there's another boss that's harder than this. But I actually had no issue with that boss. And that's no bullshit. Um, but overall. This is a fantastic game. Utterly brilliant. Any Souls fan should really check this out. Any 2D fan should check this out. Even just any gamer in general should check this out. I really hope that the, de uh, the developers of this game make a sequel or please put it on disc. This would be a game I would love to have on disc so I can play it in the future. But uh, anyhow, this is Private Mittens. I really hope you enjoyed the review and stay tuned for the next video. I don't know what I'll be doing. It might be Pokemon. Who knows? But anyhow, Final Verdict 9.0. Hope you enjoyed. Take care, guys.